Traffic is once again flowing across the Ambassador Bridge between the U.S. and Canada. A six-day protest had shuttered the international crossing between Windsor, Ontario and Detroit, Michigan, with protesters against pandemic restrictions blocking the bridge. Monday, the Canadian Prime Minister invoked the Federal Emergency Act to put an end to protests like the one that had shut down the crossing. The Trump Organization's tax firm says they, they can no longer vouch for the financial statements from the company. According to a letter sent from tax firm Mazars USA, the statements of financial condition for the former president's company from June 2011 to June 2020 can no longer be relied upon. The letter also says that their decision was based in part upon the filings made by the Attorney General, Latina James Office, and by findings discovered through the accounting firm's own investigation and information received from internal and external sources. The company had prepared Trump's income tax returns and financial statements for years. James's office is seeking to question the former president and two of his children as part of the investigation into whether he falsely represented his financial conditions while seeking loans or to limit his tax liability. The separation from the accounting firm means that the Trump organization may have to get new financial statements which could complicate its ability to secure loans. The prosecution has rested in the federal civil rights case against three Minneapolis, former Minneapolis police officers in George Floyd's death. Thomas Lane J, Alexander King, and Tu Tao are charged with deprivation of rights under color of law for allegedly failing to give Floyd medical aid in May 2020. That's when Derek Chauvin knelt on Floyd's neck. Tao and King are also charged with failing to intervene in Chauvin's use of unreasonable force. They have pleaded not guilty. Over the course of 13 days, prosecutors called more than 20 witnesses. One of them was Darnella Frazier, who recorded the cell phone video of Floyd's death. She said she heard Floyd repeatedly saying he couldn't breathe before slowly becoming unresponsive. Several medical experts testified that Floyd could have survived if officers rendered medical care. Defense attorneys for the former officers are expected to present their case on Tuesday. Tensions are rising in Ukraine as that country's president calls for a day of unity tomorrow. This comes as the U.S. moves its embassy excuse me, out of the capital of Kyiv. NBC's Bree Jackson is live from Capitol Hill with details. The crisis in Ukraine reaching a critical inflection point this week as Russian troops in Belarus practice urban combat roughly 50 miles away from Ukraine's capital. The world watching and waiting for Russian President Vladimir Putin's next move. I would just tell you that it is entirely possible that he could move with little to no warning. Ukraine's president sending a message of optimism, saying despite media reports that an invasion could happen this Wednesday, he's calling for that to be a day of unity instead. Meanwhile, the U.S. State Department is temporarily moving its embassy in Ukraine west of the capital city. It is certainly our intention to return to that embassy in Kyiv just as soon as it is uh, safe for us. With more than 100,000 troops stationed around Ukraine's border, Russia still insists it won't invade. On Capitol Hill, senators acknowledged it's unlikely they'll pass a sanctions package before an attack, but note they are necessary and should have maximum impact. I think the challenge long term is can you sustain them? I mean, that's the point. I mean, some of the sanctions, you have to sustain them. Some Ukrainians are getting ready for war either way. Yes, if Putin comes, I should be able to shoot, she says. People here in the U.S. worry about loved ones overseas. She was in Kyiv recently and she just uh, went west because she fears you know, the concept what, what's going to happen. Families praying for peace. The Pentagon says it's preparing for all outcomes. In Washington, Bree Jackson for NBC News.